Hey everyone, welcome back. So today, we're going to be reviewing Mystopia for the Nintendo Switch. And as we go through the review, don't forget that if you like what you're seeing, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And as always, any questions or comments, always welcome in the comments down below. Now, Mystopia was released on the US Nintendo eShop on November 20th, 2020. It was released for $4.99. However, currently, as of filming of this video, November 24th of 2020, it is on sale for $3.99. So as usual, I like to start with the basics. Mystopia, at its heart, is a Metroidvania style game. So basically, you start out with very basic abilities. The point of the game is to explore more and more of the map, to unlock further abilities, which then for gets you to access new parts of the map. And then basically, you rinse repeat till you're done the game. Now to begin out the game, you're, it's going to be very simple, you only have two actions. You have a simple jump button and a simple sword slash. As you further go through the game, you'll be unlocking a couple of other abilities. However, Mystopia isn't packed with abilities, so you only have about four or five unlockables. And even at four or five unlockables, I'm also even including the upgrades to some of the existing abilities themselves. And to me, Mystopia's graphic style is one of its best features. Basically, the pixel art style that they chose is beautiful, the designs are vibrant, and it keeps you interested in the gameplay. And although we don't have a huge variety of enemies, they're all very well designed as in each enemy is very different from another and they fit into the overall design of their, the two areas that the game is divided into. And also, although there are only two different zones throughout the game, the two zones are so graphically different, one being a neon pattern cavern style and the second being a lush green forest style that the overall visual design, once again, like I said, ends up being very pleasing and very different at the same time. Now, a second point that really works for Mystopia is the chiptune music in the game. Once again, there isn't a huge variety, but what is there is good and is fitting for the different environments. So obviously with a $5 game, and I'll throw it out right now, this is not a very long game. Someone who is very used to the Metroidvania style will probably kill this one in about three to four hours. If it's your first try at this style of game, you might have a slightly longer playtime out of it, but I wouldn't expect this to take more than a weekend to finish. So with such a short gameplay, even though you maybe have a total of three or four different tracks, they don't come back over and over often enough for you to get tired of them. Of course, if the game were longer, you, they would have to throw in a few extra tracks to keep it interesting. But like I said, what's there is, is very fitting and fits with the overall length of the game. And also the last and most important part I think that Mystopia really has going for it is its overall control design. The controls are simple, but they are very responsive. And although they're basic, as I said, with B being a jump button, a being in a slash, Y being your bow and arrow, and R being a roll mechanic. Overall, with the overall design of the game, you don't need more than that. Although maybe towards the end of the game, as I said, since it's been short, you almost feel like you'd like it to keep going on and finding more unlockables. Now let's circle around to some of, of the weaker points of Mystopia. So first of all, we talked about it earlier, the designs of the enemies are nice, the problem is there aren't a huge variety of enemies. You basically have three normal type enemies per zone, three for your cavern zone, three for your forest zone, and you have maybe a couple of bosses thrown into each one of the zones. And although, as I said, each enemy is very distinct and it's very obvious what the point of each type of enemy is, overall, you just feel like you'd like maybe one or two extra types thrown into there per zone. The boss fights, although visually, I would say for this game, they ended up being more appealing than I thought they'd be. Overall, their AI just isn't anything special. And if you're an average gamer or averagely used to this type of game, you'll probably dispatch them without even dying once. So I would have appreciated maybe a little bit more difficulty from the boss fights, requiring you to pick up a few extra mechanics or really use your abilities in a more interesting fashion. The second lower point of the game, I would say, is the over hub world. Basically, Mystopia is a village in the game, and your point is to rescue the different villagers and unlock them in the village. The only problem is once those villagers are unlocked, they're really 
isn't much that they end up doing in the game. And although, as I said earlier, there is a upgrade system in the game, it is extremely simplistic. You basically pick up these glowing orbs when you kill enemies, and when you have a certain number, well, there's this one villager that will get you an upgrade. But you don't have a choice of upgrades, it's just basically, this is your upgrade and this is what it does. Now, I'm, not, I'm trying to not throw too many spoilers out there, so I want to keep a little bit of mystery about the game. So I'm not going to tell you exactly what the upgrades are, but that's the gist of it. I would say that overall, those were the two major letdowns in the game. Now, I want to sort of tackle one of the elephants in the room. You've probably seen a lot of the gameplay now, and this game was heavily influenced, in my opinion, by two games, Hollow Knight and also uh, Shovel Knight. And although I don't want to compare the scope of the game to those two other games, because those other two games, in my opinion, are indie masterpieces, this game, if you want a good reference point, the gameplay the way you control your character and the feeling of the combat feels a lot like Shovel Knight. However, the overall exploration is obviously based on a Hollow Knight feeling from that side. But like I said, I don't want to compare the scope of those games. But as a reference point, I would say it's a good starting point to get an idea of how Mystopia plays out. Now, just before I give my rating on the game now, there's one last point I want to tackle, the length of the game. So I said it since the beginning, this is a short game. Like I said, most players, in my opinion, three to four hours of straight gameplay and you'll pretty much be all done or almost done with the game. If it's your first time playing a Metroidvania, you'll maybe get a few more hours of it. I know I'm repeating myself, but the reason I want to talk about this is that overall, I don't think it's a bad thing at the price that they're selling the game. At $4.99, I mean, most people, you should expect about four to five hours of good gameplay out of a game and be satisfied with that. And to myself, when at the end of the game, one of the major down points is that I would have liked more of it, to me that ends up being a positive point. Because if you end the game and you're like, hey, I wouldn't have mind playing another three to four hours of this game, well, to me overall, that means that the game was enjoyable enough that you want more of it. So, and that's the way I sort of ended up feeling at the end of Mystopia. And I think that one of its major downsides is its length and that it didn't go deep enough but the overarching mechanics of the game and the functionality of the game are good enough that you want more with that i think we're ready for the verdict now as usual if this is your first time watching one of my reviews i don't give a numerical score i give an overall statement that explains to you where my position is on purchasing the game if you want to see what the all the list of statements are they're going to be in the description of the video down below and this game, Mystopia, is going to be getting a solid game. Basically, if you're into Metroidvanias and you want a easy, laid back few hours experience, this is going to be a great game to pick up. Also, if you're new to the style and you're not sure you're going to like it and you want just a first easy outing, Mystopia is a great game for you as well. And although the game is short and simple, it's solid mechanics, it's beautiful graphic style, and it overall, it's price of only $4.99, just in my opinion, all fit together. Now it's not a hidden gem, but it is, as I said, a solid game. So as I said earlier, if you like what you saw, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Oh, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you all in my next video.